Japanese researchers say fish caught in waters off the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant absorbed large amounts of radioactive cesium immediately after the accident, rather than gradually accumulating the material over time. We concluded that the fish absorbed cesium in large quantities shortly after the nuclear accident in March 2011. Last August, the operator of the plant detected radioactive cesium at 380 times the government safety standard in a single rock trout. A fish was caught about one kilometer off the coast of Minami Soma City, Fukushima Prefecture. Researchers at the National Research Institute of Fisheries Science analyzed an organ called the ear stone to pinpoint the precise time when the fish absorbed the radioactive cesium. The technique is reliable because the organ is known to grow in layers like growth rings in a tree. They found the highest level of radioactivity in the layer formed between the spring and summer of 2011. Watanabe says he expects the level of radioactive cesium to decrease gradually in fish in the area. The European Union has proposed to its members new nuclear safety measures that would require periodic reviews of all reactors by multinational experts. The EU's executive arm, the European Commission, put out the new safety directives draft on Thursday. The goals are to increase transparency and set up what it calls a European system of peer review for nuclear power plants following the Fukushima nuclear accident in 2011. The directives require legally binding peer reviews every six years for all 132 nuclear reactors in operation in the bloc. The Commission would form a verification committee to urge member nations to step up safety should problems be found at any plant. The proposals include boosting the independence of national regulators so that special interests cannot override safety objectives. The Commission also wants to obligate member states to build emergency response centers on the premises of nuclear plants to effectively cope with any emergency. It aims to have the proposals approved by member nations next year. The domes of the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station have been a fixture of the Southern California coast for decades. Leaks in the steam generator tubes forced Southern California Edison to shut down the reactors, but the toxic legacy of the facility could remain for generations to come. The bad news is the fact that there's 35 years of nuclear waste. Nuclear expert Arnie Gunderson helped educate the public about the safety problems at the plant and explained what will happen to the waste inside the reactors. In about five years it will come out of the nuclear fuel pool and it's stored in these things called dry casks. So it can be air cooled. They'll go outside and they'll sit outside for perhaps 40 or 50 years. And the big deal there is that there's no place to ship them. Congress and the Obama administration defunded a planned nuclear waste repository. Millions of pounds of radioactive material will stay at the San Onofre site. With no place to go, used nuclear fuel is held at dozens of temporary locations around the U.S. There are still safety concerns and lingering financial issues at the shutdown power plant. Utility company SoCal Edison has charged ratepayers hundreds of millions of dollars over the last year and a half without producing any energy at San Onofre. Decommissioning the plant could cost $3 billion. I mean, the steam generators were supposed to last um, 40 to 60 years, and they failed in less than two years. So we did not get our money's worth. So we should not have to pay for any of that. Donna Gilmore and 8 million other people live within 50 miles of the plant. The shutdown will force SoCal Edison to lay off more than 1,000 workers. Gilmore worries the managers at the plant will put profits over safety. I'm concerned that they're just cutting the numbers and not making sure they have the right people in the right place um, to, to manage that waste. Gunderson believes the shutdown is one of the most significant events in the history of nuclear energy. And the industry is very concerned that um, now that citizens realize that they can do it, there may be more citizen action to shut down more nuclear plants. Four nuclear plants have closed in the U.S. this year. In California, it will still be many more years 
before this scenic oceanfront is nuclear free. In Los Angeles. An unusual kitten born yesterday in Oregon is getting national attention. It has two faces. Veterinarians say the first 24 hours will be critical. Keely Chalmers tells us how the kitty is doing. This is Ducey. Less than two days old. And this little kitty is already making a big impression. There you go, Ducey. It's okay. The first was on owner Stephanie Durkee. The kids actually found him and came in and said, uh, There's a kitty with two heads. Mom, there's a kitty with two heads. <laughs> and I said, I think you guys are just tired. You're crazy. I said, there, that doesn't happen. But they were right. Ducey was born with two faces. And there's the other one. Mm -hmm. Rejected by her mother, there the rare go. kitty now has a new mom. She's bottle fed. We live in Clackamas. We just got here. Yeah, they drove out to, <laughs> they drove here. Out to see her. In fact, Stephanie says she's been getting calls from all over the country. But like any new mom, she's very protective over her unique baby. It is a very rare condition. Dr. Christy Ellis, lead veterinarian at the Oregon Humane Society, says animals born with this condition usually don't survive. But she says as long as Ducey's organs are functioning normally, the kitten has a good chance. There is a report of a cat who lived 12 years with us. So, um, you know, certainly long survival is possible. And a long, happy life is exactly what Stephanie hopes to give, what she calls her special gift. She's beautiful. Japan's low birth rate is leaving a lot of classrooms empty. Administrators are closing and consolidating school facilities. Now municipal officials are trying to give the old buildings new life. In one case, a business stepped in and replaced the students with sturgeon. It still looks like a junior high school on the outside, but on the inside, it's a facility for raising fish. Tanks have been installed in the former school gymnasium. They house 30 sturgeons, each about a meter long. The building's been retrofitted to produce caviar, a delicacy around the world. This ceremony marks the completion of the facility's construction. City officials took applications from prospective buyers with ideas for making effective use of the site. They selected an interior decorating company that had proposed a two-pronged plan, solar power generation and sturgeon cultivation. Katsushige Matsuda heads the fishery subsidiary the company has established to culture the sturgeons. He's a 30-year veteran of a regional fishery co-op. There, he was involved in fish and seaweed cultivation, and he happens to be a graduate of this very school. It was really sad to see the place overgrown, just a year after the school was shut down. I really want to make this into a lively place again. Matsuda decided on sturgeons because they are resistant to disease and can live and grow in tanks and in the school's swimming pool. Sturgeons only need about a fifth of the feed required for sea aquaculture. That helps cut down production and management costs. Matsuda's staff pumps groundwater into the tanks so the temperature is stable, 22 degrees Celsius in summer and 12 degrees in winter. And that's ideal for the sturgeons. It takes about seven years for baby sturgeons to become caviar-producing adults. Matsuda started his operation with fully grown sturgeons and will collect their eggs this fall. His goal is to have 20,000 fish at the facility. The former home economics kitchen will function as a processing plant. It's important for companies to create new opportunities for people. I hope our products will develop into a local speciality. Matsuda says caviar production isn't enough to achieve local specialty status. He's now working on dishes that feature sturgeon meat.
today. I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a, a world, world without, without nuclear weapons. Of a world without nuclear weapons. This matters to people everywhere. Some argue that the spread of these weapons cannot be stopped, cannot be checked. Such fatalism is a deadly adversary. For if we believe that the spread of nuclear weapons is inevitable, then in some way we are admitting to ourselves that the use of nuclear weapons is inevitable. To denounce a call for cooperation is an easy but also a cowardly thing to do. That's how wars begin. That's where human progress ends. But make no mistake. When we fail to pursue peace, then it stays forever beyond our grasp. Forever beyond our grasp. Forever beyond our grasp. It will take patience and persistence. But we must ignore the voices who tell us the world cannot change. Human destiny will be what we make of it. Let us bridge our divisions, build upon our hopes, and accept our responsibility to leave this world, to leave this world more prosperous, more prosperous, and more peaceful than we found it, and more peaceful than we found it, and more peaceful than we found it. My name is Christoph Waltz. My name is Alec Baldwin. My name is Naomi Watts. Morgan Freeman. Martin Sheen. Robert De Niro. Billy Kravitz. And I demand. And I demand. I demand. And I demand zero. 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 I demand zero. 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 I demand zero. 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 I demand zero. Zero. I demand zero. Zero. I demand zero. My name is Michael Douglas, and I demand zero. The world must stand together to prevent the spread of these weapons. And before we wrap up, many of us consider babies innocent and pure. Well, Japanese researchers are backing up that way of thinking. They say their new study shows humans are born good-natured. A team at Kyoto University Graduate School showed 20 babies aged 10 months an animated film depicting one figure attacking another. The babies were later told to pick out a figure in the film. 16 of them, or 80 percent, chose a figure that had been attacked. The researchers say this shows the babies empathize with the figure that suffered. We believe humans have the nature to be nice to others from the very beginning of development and that we're good-natured from when we're babies. The researchers say in similar tests with adults, the percentage of those who empathize with the attacked figure declines. Kanakogi says this suggests humans are inherently good-natured, but lose some of their goodness with age. Tomorrow on Dr. Good, could a pill put an end to the pain of getting hit in the balls? Take it right after you get kicked in the balls, during that delay before the serious pain starts to kick in. You have to take a pill. Take a, take a pill. pill now. <laughs> but there's one catch. You now have to take that pill every day at the same time or all that pain will suddenly be released out of nowhere.